What's up everyone, Kevin Benny here. So last week I did a tutorial on how to play the sax solo from the Hall & Oates song, I Can't Go For That. This one right here. <laughs> And this week, I'm gonna talk about four aspects that make this solo a great solo. And the idea is to try to implement these aspects into your own soloing so you can solo like a boss. So let's get into it. The first aspect is rhythm. Rhythm should always be first. Let's listen to a little bit of the original solo really quick. <laughs> So listening to that little bit of the solo, you'll notice that the rhythm is very precise. If your rhythm is accurate and it's grooving, you're already miles ahead. And believe it or not, you could play wrong notes, but if your rhythm is really decisive and really locked in there, you can get away with that. People relate to rhythm first. It's just an innate part of being human. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't learn the right notes, but if your rhythm is not great, then right notes are not going to sound good. Whereas if your rhythm is great, wrong notes can sound pretty good. So ask yourself, the next time you're taking a solo, is your rhythm really decisive? To the point where you can easily transcribe the rhythm like I did right here. All right, next aspect that makes a solo a good solo. Phrasing. There are distinct beginnings and endings to the phrases. This solo is built up of two bar and one bar phrases that call and respond to each other. Let me demonstrate it really quick. Let me get my sax out. So we have the call, the first call. Then the answer or the respond. Then the second call. Second answer. Then the last call. Then the last answer. So there you go. Phrasing is such a big part of having a great solo. A great way to develop your phrasing is to have this call and response type of flow. So when you're practicing soloing or improvising, start with just one phrase at a time. Really try to create individual phrases with your soloing. And then try to link those phrases together with a call and response to yourself. Okay, the third aspect is arc. This has to do with the varying in intensity or energy within a solo. Some people may call this climax, with there usually being a climax in energy around the middle of the solo or like the mid end of the solo. There are three ways to vary the intensity of a solo that is universal with all instruments. And that is volume, how loud or soft you play, rhythm, you know, how fast you're playing, how slow you're playing your rhythm, and then range, how high or low you're playing within your instrument's range. This solo uses rhythm and range to vary its intensity. In the sixth bar, you'll see that the solo goes up to a high E, so the highest in the range, and then it speeds up to 16th notes. And that creates the climax of energy of the solo. Let's listen to the whole solo while I demonstrate the arc with my hand, high to low intensity. <laughs> So there you go, and actually the ending of the solo didn't even come back down all the way to the beginning of the solo. So there's not a definite way of how the arc should be. It's not like the middle should be definitely the loudest, or the end should be the softest. Or, you know, there's different varying ways of doing your arc. You can start really low and then finish really hot. Uh, it can start really hot and then come back down. It could do this sort of thing where it starts really loud, comes down, and comes back down loud in the end. But using arc to enhance your solo solo is basically you just don't want to be stagnant with your energy. You want to have a very specific arc that fits any specific tune or song that you're playing the solo in. Okay, the fourth and last aspect is melody. Bottom line, your solo should be melodic. It should be singable and an even better quality that your solo should have is it should be reminiscent of the melody to the tune or song you're playing in. The solo that we've been talking about is reminiscent of the original melody. Let's listen to the first phrase of, to the verse that Daryl Hall sings. Time. 
So the first note of the sax solo is the exact same pitch as the first note of the verse melody. The melody goes, easy ready working overtime. So that first note is a should be a B flat concert, which is a G on the alto saxophone. Right there. And then another thing that's very reminiscent of the melody is this solo is eighth note based, just like the melody. And the sax solo. So it has those two qualities that make it reminiscent of the melody. Let's listen to the second phrase of the verse melody. So again, the, the second phrase of the solo starts on the same pitch as the second phrase of the verse. Um, it goes, Where does it stop? Where do you tell me to draw the line? Where does it... That should be an F concert, which is a D on the saxophone, on the alto saxophone. Just right there. And then it actually ends on the same pitch as that phrase. Where do you tell me to draw the line, line? That last note is a C concert, which is an A on the alto saxophone. Line. Okay, there you go. And again, it's sticking with this eighth note bass. Same eighth note bass. So keeping aspects of your solo similar to the original melody is a great way to just make sure your solo fits really well within that specific song. It's also going to make your solo a lot more memorable and singable, which is a huge thing because when the audience is listening to you play and it gets stuck in their ear because it's singable and it's reminiscent of the original melody, that's the solos they remember. That's when they're like after the concert and the gig like, man, Remember that solo that sax player took? Remember that solo that guitar player took? That's how you do it. You know, get it more into the melody. Get it singable. Get it more melodic. And that's where melody fits into making your solo a lot better. All right, everyone. Those are the four aspects I think make the sax solo from the song I Can't Go For That a good one. And those are four aspects that I think you can directly implement into your own playing to make your own solos that much better. It's all about telling a story with your solo. And I think using these four aspects, you could tell a really great story. Now, of course, great solos are not limited to these four aspects that make them a good solo. So go out, listen to a lot of solos, a lot of music, and find out for yourself what you think makes a good solo. Okay, thank you everybody for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. Be sure to like, comment, let me know what you think, subscribe. If you're watching this video on Facebook, be sure to go over to my YouTube channel and do everything I just told you, especially subscribe. So the next few weeks, I am gonna be taking a break from the weekly content, I'm trying to spend a little more time finalizing my website, getting into my video production software, and I'm doing some stuff with digital audio workstations or audio production software, where my next videos, I'm going to be demoing some different software. It should be really cool. So to make sure you don't miss that or any of my new videos, be sure to subscribe with the bubble because I'm going to be coming back super strong. All right, everyone, thank you again, and I will see you in the next one. Where do you tell me to draw the line, line, line? Oh, man. The detuning of the track is really messing me up. La, la, la. Oh, my goodness. That doesn't really work.